right, thank you. So yesterday we were talking about computing a height on the Jacobian, and we ended up wanting to pair two divisors, D1 and D2, degree zero. Um, and we said, well, this global piatic height was a sum of local piatic heights. And we also said, well, actually there's something special that happens at P. So the local piatic height at P is omega, one, uh, omega D1 integrated along D2 plus, and then we have all the local heights for the primes V away from P. So this, of course, this is a local height D1, D2. And we discussed how we constructed this normalized differential, omega D1. So this was a differential of the third kind for which a certain map psi uh, landed it in this complementary subspace to the space of regular one forms with an H1 Durham. So this is a third kind differential. So this has some simple poles. And let's talk about how we integrate third kind differentials. So how do we compute Coleman integrals of differentials of the third kind. All right, so say I want to integrate uh, r from r to s, two points on my curve, uh, integrate some omega, where the residue divisor of omega is p minus q. All right, so the first thing is to compute this map psi. So this is, we said psi takes an, a differential of the third kind into H1 Durham. And we do this by computing cut products. And uh, by Sarah's cut product formula, this is essentially a sum of residues. So we formally integrate uh, and compute some residues. So the way we do this actually is we say, well, you know, we know this lands in H1 Durham. So we say, so what does this mean? Well, psi of omega is some linear combination of a basis and then we want to solve for the coefficients. Solve for bi by computing psi of omega and cupping it with each basis element. All right. Now, we're going to look at um, an auxiliary differential. So we'll take alpha to be the pullback of Frobenius on omega, this third kind differential, minus p times omega. And we'll use the property that we have Frobenius equivariance to compute psi of alpha. So doing this kind of from scratch would be really painful. Uh, so what we do is we take Frobenius. Uh, so we've computed psi of omega from the uh, previous step. We know this is some element of H1 Durham. So we have some coefficients with respect to the basis that we've chosen. And then now Frobenius, well, we have the matrix of Frobenius that we've computed um, for various purposes. And so we can just hit this by this matrix of Frobenius and then take minus p times this vector of coefficients for psi of omega. All right, now we're gonna take some uh, differential beta of the third kind, such that it has residue divisor corresponding to the divisor that we're integrating along, and we're going to compute psi of beta. And now we're going to use a reciprocity law due to Coleman. So 
So this is an analog of the reciprocity. So the integral from r to s of omega we can solve for in the following way. So we have psi of alpha, again, some element of H1 Durand that we computed, psi of beta as well, and a sum of residues of alpha times the integral of beta minus some tiny intervals. So this is our integral of a differential of the third kind. And this is what allows us to compute the local height at P of two divisors of um, disjoint support. So maybe one word about why we had this differential alpha here. Uh, so alpha, we said, uh, was, um, let's see. So alpha here was this pullback of Frobenius on omega minus P omega. And we kind of make things worse for ourselves before things get better, right? So we start off with this differential the third kind omega, which is, you know, maybe not so bad. And then we pull back by Frobenius, and so we introduce worse poles. And the point of doing that, though, is that within each annulus, uh, alpha is, is essentially it's of the second kind, right? In that um, we, the, the sum of residues is zero. So that's kind of why we introduce this auxiliary differential alpha. It kind of acts like something of the second kind. So within each annulus where we have to compute um, a number of residues here, well, we can save ourselves a constant integration. All right, so what this lets us do, so this lets us compute. So I've got a, yes. Excuse me, I've got a question. I'm sort of a little troubled because if you think, maybe this is the wrong way to think, but in complex analytic situation, you know, omega has poles at um, P and Q. Right. So it's, shouldn't give you a cohomology class on X, it should give you a cohomology class, a non-trivial class on X minus P and Q, the punctured curve. Mm -hmm. So somehow implicit in this is a projection from the cohomology of the open subset into the whole thing. Right, right. So that's what this map psi was. It was this projection from third kind mod logarithmic into H1 Duran. So I, yeah, that kind of happened at the end of the last um, of the last lecture, and maybe I, you know, after this I can kind of go through the details of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but essentially this this is a projection map onto H1 Duran. All right. Uh, okay. So what this lets us do is compute the local height of two divisors d1 and d2, um, disjoint support and degree zero, since we said that the local height is the integral of omega d1 along d2. And so an obvious question is, what about the self-pairing? Of a divisor. All right, so that's a natural thing to consider. So what if we want to compute something like the pairing of d with itself? So by this Definition. So, of course, Coleman and Gross, um, your divisors have to disjoint support, so you can't really do this. But if you were to pretend to do this, well, you're constructing a differential that has poles along D and then integrating along D. So it doesn't seem like a thing that you really want to do. Uh, but it turns out that if we let, so uh, let's, wait. let's consider first. So if we consider the case of x, a hyperelliptic curve with odd degree model, uh, we can relate some of this. So the local height of uh, this self so this self-pairing, or the local height at P of D with itself, uh, when D is this divisor, 
z minus the point at infinity. This is equal to a sum of, uh, so a sum of these double integrals that we saw yesterday. So uh, from zero hyperelliptic curve odd degree model genus g. So from zero to g minus one, the double integral of omega i, where omega i is x to the i dx over 2y, and omega i bar is still under the cut product. All right, and so b here is a tangential base point at infinity, since uh, if, we looked at, if we look at these duals, omega i, they will necessarily have poles at infinity. All right, so with this, though, we have an application to integral points. So can you use this to study integral points on hyperelliptic curves? So here is the result. So quadratic shadow t for integral points on hyperelliptic curves. And this is work with Besser and Mueller. All right, so we'll let F be a polynomial um, coefficients in Z, monic, separable, the degree 2G plus 1, which is greater than or equal to 3. Uh, we want to talk about integral points, so let's set this up. So consider spec of this ring. And we'll let x be the normalization of the projective closure of the generic fiber of u. So we have our hyperelliptic curve. And we'll let j be the Jacobian of our curve x. And we'll assume that the Mordell Bay rank of the Jacobian is equal to G. Uh, and we'll suppose that log from the Jacobian tensor QP into H naught omega 1. This is an isomorphism. So we'll work with so implicitly, I don't think we see a P. Oh, yes, we do. Okay. So P will be a prime, a good prime. <laughs> and the claim is then there exist explicitly computable constants alpha ij in QP such that the following function rho z, which is so a sum of these double Coleman integrals minus this combination of products of single integrals. This, this row, this takes values in an explicitly computable finite set S in QP for all integer points 
on you. So this should feel somewhat similar to what we saw with the Shabuti Coleman method. So the claim is that there is some function and we're describing it in terms of Coleman integrals. So here we have products of single integrals, the usual um, linear functionals that you've seen many times, uh, and some piata constants here, putting them together, and then some sum of double Coleman integrals. And we saw a little bit about those yesterday. They show up, um, and we, we also saw uh, in Min Yang's lecture as well, uh, some iterated intervals. So this, this is something that we can expand uh, in each residue disk. And within each residue disk, look at this piatic power series and solve for its finitely many piatic zeros. And the claim is that, well, so we're not uh, actually just looking at its zeros, but we're looking at um, some particular finite set of values that it has to take that we can compute ahead of time. So we set this equal to each of the values in this set and solve for those uh, piatic points. And the hope is that that will let us recover the set of integral points. So just like with the Shabuti Coleman method, we might pick up other piatic points that we'll have to then distinguish whether or not they're truly integral points on the hyperliptic curve. And uh, maybe I can say a little bit about the idea uh, behind this result. So we have, again, this global height. We said, so this is our global height, global height h. This is our local height at p plus a sum of local heights away from p. And then we rearrange things, so we have the height, the global height minus the local height at p, and this is equal to, again, a bunch of local heights away from p. So this maybe, um, so this is something on integral points. There are finitely many values. and we can compute them ahead of time. And on the other side, well, we said these were both things involving Coleman integrals. Where we're using the fact that in the case when the rank is equal to the genus, and we have uh, this isomorphism here, uh, so this global height h, we're going to further rewrite in terms of a basis for the space of quadratic forms. So the global height itself being a particularly nice quadratic form on our global points. So we'll write this as the sum of the products of these single integrals. And so doing some linear algebra, so we also, so not only do we need to know that the rank is equal to the genus, but we need to know that many independent points on the Jacobian. So we need to have some data, some global data coming from the Jacobian of the curve as well. But if we have that, then it's, uh, we talked about how we would compute the single intervals along those points in the Jacobian, just by picking representatives of those points. And we would also compute the global heights of those points as well using this relationship that we can compute the local piatic height of points in the Jacobian uh, using the construction there. And then lo the local heights away from P, well, again, these are intersection multiplicities of those divisors extended to a regular model. So for any given point in the Jacobian, we can compute its global height. We can also compute, um, and, and so we can compute these Coleman integrals, and that allows us to solve for alpha ij up to some piatic precision. Right, and in that way, we can construct a function given that global data. All right. So you might be wondering, well, is there a way to salvage this for rational points, right? Because we would really like to say something about rational points on curves. So what goes wrong? Well, we said that the local heights away from P, these are essentially intersection multiplicities, 
And so those are essentially telling us what denominators of our rational points. So if we are trying to understand our rational points, well, in some sense, we're trying to understand their denominators. So we, we don't have a way of computing these local heights ahead of time. So we don't have some control of the values that the local heights can take away from P on the set of our rational points. So we, it's difficult. We don't know how to control the sum of local heights away from P on all rational points. All right, so this then suggests perhaps we need to consider an alternative construction of heights. to extend quadratic Chabotis from integral points to rational points. So our goal is to extend quadratic Chabotis from integral points to rational points. Uh, and the problem that we need to solve is that we need to control local heights away from P. So our solution is to use a piatic height that factors through Kim's Unipotent Kummer map and control local heights in the setting. <coughs> so for this, we need some non abelian height. So remember. So far, what we've done is factoring through the Jacobian. So we are, instead of heights via the Jacobian. And so we'll use heights on block Cato summer groups after Nekovar. So now x uh, will be a nice curve of genus greater than 1 and p a good prime. And we'll let b be the tape module. And um, by work of Nekovar, Um, 93, we have a bilinear symmetric pairing H, where now we're considering the height pairing of certain Galois representations. So in particular, here we're taking the tape module. Um, now this this height, like before, this has a decomposition into a sum of local heights, and we would like to understand the local heights here. I should mention that this is equivalent to the Coleman-Gross height that we've been discussing. Via an et al. Albol Jacobi map. This is work of Amnon Besser. And this also depends, so this height 
H also depends on some auxiliary choices like the colon gross height. So very similar choices. So first, just like the Coleman gross height, we have the choice of an adult class character. And a splitting of the Hodge filtration. on beta rom, which is decris of V. So in our case, this is H1 derom of X over QP dual. Okay, and let's call the splitting S. Now you will remember that in the Coleman growth setting, to pair divisors, or to pair, rather, to pair points on the Jacobian. We needed some choice of divisors. And here the choice, here the choice depends on our mixed extension. All right, so let me tell you what that is. If I have a pair of extension classes, E1 and E2, I take representatives. and interpret them as extensions in the following way. So I have an extension of QP by V. So that's my E1. And I have an extension of V by QP1. So I'll put that here. That's my E2. And Let's see, I don't know if I can fit this here. So we'll fill in the diagram. So we get this. So And so here, this E, this is our mixed extension. A mixed extension of E1 and E2 with graded pieces QP, V, QP1. So maybe I should also mention that there is a weight filtration. By um, sub, sub representations, so. <laughs> such that if I look at the minus one part, this is E2 and E over the minus two part is E minus one. Uh, 
So these are GQ reps. All right, so I'd like to consider height pairings, or the height, the neck of our height on this mixed extension E. And we'll let MQ be the set of all such mi mixed extensions. So with the three graded pieces, uh, QPV, QP1, and correspondingly for our prime V, uh, I'll also consider MV, mixed extensions of GV reps. And uh, correspondingly, uh, we'll sometimes denote things the subscript F to indicate uh, crystalline. So MQF, the same thing, but crystalline. Okay. Now, for one of these mixed extensions, we're going to define the local height at V to be the local height of this restriction of E. So this, of course, is in MV. And there are more details in the notes in section four. Uh, and let's see, something that to, now we want to put up this together. So we can define now for our E1 and E2 its height to be the sum of these local heights of our mixed extension. So what we'll do now is from this point forward, we'll assume that the local height of EL, so by that, so I'll call this EV, so this restriction um, at V. So I'll assume that the local height at EL is trivial for all L not equal to P. So this is the case when EL is potentially unramified. Uh, and so local heights at L are trivial when X has potential good reduction at L. So e.g. when X has potential good reduction at L, local height HL is zero. All right, so this is how we'll kind of um, use the height in um, the setting of rational points. So we can now control the local heights away from P. If we assume, for instance, that X has potential good reduction at all primes L. All right, so let me introduce um, a definition. So a filtered fee module over QP is a finite dimensional QP vector space W with an exhaustive and separated decreasing filtration fill and an automorphism V. And let me remind you what some of these words mean. So by exhaustive, I mean if I take the union 
over all pieces. I get back the whole space <coughs> separated. Take the intersection, and it's trivial, and decreasing. So each subsequent piece is contained in the one before it. And you've seen some examples of these objects already. We just really haven't called them that. So let's look at some examples. So QP, it's a one-dimensional p-adic vector space with fill 0 equal to QP and fill n 0 for all subsequent n and phi just the identity. Um, here's another example. So by faultings, uh, so faultings comparison theorem. We have that H1 Durham is decris of H1 at all. QP coefficients and H1 at all is crystalline. And so use or we take Frobenius. on crystalline cohomology. And the Hodge filtration. And this gives H1 drum the structure of a filter fee module. Same thing for beta rum. With the dual filtration in action. And the direct sum QP, B, QP1 also has the structure of a filtered B module. All right. So we'll let EP be a crystalline mixed extension of GP representations with graded pieces QP, V, and QP1. And then E to ROM, which is decris of EP, is a mixed extension of GP reps. Uh, sorry, is a mixed extension of filtered B modules. with grade pieces, QP, V, and QP1. So to construct, so what we're trying to do now is to construct the local height at P. Of EP. And what we need is an explicit description of two things, this Frobenius action and the filtration on Ederom. And this should remind you a little bit about what we did for the Coleman gross height. So we computed uh, a certain canonical subspace with an H1 Durham. So we did that. We said we were going to fix the splitting of the Hodge filtration. And that helped us narrow down a certain differential of the third kind. 
which we used Frobenius to integrate. So there are some pieces of the prior computation that should kind of motivate maybe some of what we're doing here. Okay, so just to kind of bring us back, what, we're, what, what are we trying to do? We want to compute this global height of our mixed extension, which we said was a sum of some local heights here. And we said that this was this plus a sum of local heights away from P. But we said we're going to restrict to a particular case where all of these are trivial. Okay? Because that was our old problem. We didn't have a way to control them in the coleman gross setting. But using the neck of our height, we can impose hypotheses under which these are all trivial. And this will allow us to study rational points. OK. So let's go from Kim to neck of our. So the idea is that we want certain maps, so from rational points into our global mixed extensions, and from our QP points, and our QL points. And we want these to factor through. Unipotent Coomer. So to do this, we'll impose some additional hypotheses. So we'll assume, in addition to having our curve uh, of genus at least two, <coughs> and the rank uh, so, I don't think we assumed this yet, but now we will. The rank of the Jacobian is equal to G, and further, the rank of the neuron severity group of the Jacobian, uh, that will be greater than 1. And the claim is that then, in this case, there's some correspondence C that allows us to construct a nice quotient of U2. Right. And let me just remind you, so by work of Kim, of course, we know that we have UN, this n-step unipotent quotient, of the QP pro unipotent completion the tall fundamental group uh, with a rational base point. And this, um, so we'll work at this second step, U2, and we'll call this nice quotient uh, UZ, and then we'll further drop that uh, label Z. So the details of this are in sections four and five in the lecture notes. So for the construction of UZ. All right. Now, further by work of Kim, we have these local unipotent Coomer maps. J, UV from our QV points on the curve into H1. And we'll assume that J U L is trivial for all L not equal to P. Now in general, by the work of Kim and Tamagawa, We know that JUL has finite image. <coughs> and 
And I should say also that this assumption about these maps being trivial um, everywhere away from P, this is satisfied in case of our curve X having everywhere potentially good reduction. So we have this diagram. So we have our rational points into our piatic points. We have the space with our global representations. We restrict. And let's name these maps. So this is JUP. We'll abbreviate that to JP. And this is JU. We'll call that J. All right, and uh, I don't think I said this yet, but T is a set of bad primes. Union, our working prime P, and GT is the maximal quotient. of gal q bar over q unramified outside t. All right, so the lemma is that the set x, q, u, which will be taking this local image and then pulling back by jp, this is finite. And this is very close to the set X QP2 uh, that we'd like to study. Um, now, more generally, this result holds for curves satisfying the following hypothesis. Uh, we'll focus on the case when the rank is equal to the genus and the rank of neuron severity uh, is greater than one. So what we have is that the rational points live in this set. And the goal is to compute x, q, u. Maybe I'll call this XQP, you know, just to emphasize the P, um, using piatic heights. So this is quadratic Chavotte. The rational points. All right, so the next thing that we'll have to do is extend this diagram slightly um, by a certain twisting construction and then use some properties um, of our curve X given the hypotheses we've imposed to translate to something um, involving bilinear forms and some linear algebra. Uh, but I think I'll stop here and save that for the next time. Questions? So you have this uh, everywhere potentially good reduction assumption to kind of make the elatic heights really simple. Yes. Uh, can you still sort of control these heights in the case where you have like semi-stable reduction at some primes? Or does so, it just uh... make it more complicated? Yeah, uh, so Alex, so the question is, can we control local heights in other reasonable settings, for instance, semi-stable reduction? And I know that Alex Betts and Nitan Dagra um, are studying this, and they've um, 
you know, looked at some instances where you might be able to control local heights away from P in certain situations. Uh, what is the, the word quadratic come from? Because in your papers, you assume it's a, either Q or quadratic extension. Uh, what's the benefit of taking just this? And is that can be extend to general extension of of Q or anything? Um, so this is a question about where quadratic comes from. And I think one maybe naive um, explanation of quadratic is that well, we have some quadratic form, which is the piatic height, and uh, or you know a bilinear form, a bilinear pairing. Um, and we're moving from the linear world from Shabuti Coleman to the next uh, non abelian thing, which is this bilinear setting. So, what's the way to think about the difference between the Coleman gross height and the neck over height? So, you, in the Coleman gross case, you have these terms for all these primes L that you can't control. Mm -hmm. Do those somehow get rolled into the main term for the neck of our height, or do they just disappear because it's a fundamentally different object? So, um, one way is um, if you were to uh, look at this uh, construction of Besser, um, where he looks at this et al. Abel Jacobi map, you can maybe translate this uh, understanding of the Coleman gross height on divisors of curves into the corresponding uh, mixed extensions. But um, maybe another answer to that is um, so if you were to look at these mixed extensions, so if you had the cycle and you kind of do all this and to translate to what that looks like on the Coleman gross side, you don't end up taking um, these kind of simple divisors that we were pairing earlier. So the divisors that you would end up looking at might have very nice intersection properties, and so those go away. Um, so I think there are a few different ways to answer that question, uh, but maybe the short answer is that we're, not, we're no longer just looking at these denominators because we're not looking at this pairing that we were looking at in the first place. Okay, uh, let's thank Chen again. Can I, can I make one brief announcement? I think this is mentioned already, but if you're planning to come on the hike, make sure you, they've said,